After seven weeks of continuous demolition, we are starting with construction on my great-great-grandfather's $7,000 mansion. Seven weeks ago, I started with the largest DIY project I have ever done. This is the mansion that my great-great-grandfather bought 90 years ago for $7,000. When this 5,550 square foot masterpiece was built, it was one of the fanciest houses in the United States of America. From solid oak floors to solid oak doors, tiles in the floors, mirrors built in into all the closet doors, and it even had its own generator in the basement. 30 years before the power grid was here. This place was over the top. So 90 years ago, the house was absolute tip-top shape over the top, and over those 90 years, it started to get run down a little bit more year after year after year, and now here we are today. The house is in full need of repair. So I asked my neighbor Justin and my friend Roman for some help and we got to work. We demolished the attic, then we demolished the upstairs, then we demolished the main floor, and then we demolished the basement. Once we got done with that, we closed cell spray foam, insulated everything. So for the last seven weeks, we have been doing demolition every single day in a big, ginormous, dusty mess, clearing out everything in this 5,550 square foot house. So today is a day we have been looking forward to for a long, 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 time. All of the walls now look like this because they are closed cell spray foam insulated. We got all the floors cleaned up so we are now in a mess free environment. We have new lumber in the house and we have a whole bunch of holes in the floors up there, down there, and way down there. And we have a set of plans and we have six sets of hands. Six sets. Justin, you. Me? That's right, in three sets, and thankfully it's six hands, but not six sets. Cool. Today is the day. We are starting with construction and actually putting things back together to rebuild and restore this house. And by restoration, I mean when this place was built, it was over the top. We are building it back over the top for today's standards. So this place is going to be a masterpiece. Okay, Justin, so you are the GE, or AKA the general contractor of this project. So we are listening to everything Justin says to do. Roman second in command when it comes to construction stuff, because I'm just a camera guy and I know how to hold stuff and go get things. So what are we starting with? We're gonna start with Cleaning up the floor system, going through and replacing the ones that need replaced. And then uh, right now, we're just cutting this edge square with that wall. I got a string line or a chalk line chalked. So we're going to start in this area and stair step our sheeting back to that corner. So, in other words, we are getting the floor set first. Yes. Yep. And then we'll have to slide it underneath that wall as we go. How are we going to do that? We're going to put a micro lamb across the top. We're going to screw it into the studs and put cripples on the side to carry all the weight. Roman about fell. He's got, his, he's got, his, he's got his sea legs on. See? Oh, I see. There's a long way down there, Roman. I didn't think I'll end up there, but I may hurt some parts of my body. So to kick things off, now that we're on to the actual construction side of things, the first thing we need to do is get a floor in place because we can't build anything if we don't have a floor. The floor consists of two parts. We have the floor joists, which are these big boards that are turned up on their sides, and then we have the subfloor, which is OSB. The rooms that we're dealing with first are the kitchen, and then the bathroom in the corner. That's all going to become kitchen space. And then the area behind me, which is the living room. The floor joists are the foundation for everything that the floor is going to be built on and everything in the house is gonna be built upon the floor. So it's vital that we have this level. So in order to ensure that this is level after 100 years of being here, we need to do an inspection. So we're looking for imperfections in the boards. Kind of like right here. We have a big chunk out of this one. So the structural integrity has been affected. So we're gonna be replacing this. And then we have spots like right here where we have this board that's pulled back. You can see where it's been charred. There used to be a chimney right here and the chimney got hot and it actually burnt that board. But we don't have the chimney here anymore. It's obviously tore out. So we want the floor joists to come in and sit right over the top of this wall, just like this. So all the weight is sitting on that wall and that's transferred down into the ground below. 
right here, we don't have any of that. So we need to put a longer board in here and then we'll have to rebuild the wall underneath here so that way we actually have something for this floor joist to sit on. So this floor joist is going to be getting replaced. And then we also need to check for the levelness of the boards. We had tile on these floors before and they had mortar underneath and it weighed an incredible amount. We literally had an entire pickup worth of weight sitting on these floor joists. So they sit. So right, right here, for example, we have the level. This is level. I can lift my fingers all the way underneath right here. So this board sagged out. It's no good. We're going to be replaced. And this board's not the only one because if we take our level and keep sliding it down, we have a gap in this one. So this one's low. This board's going to be getting replaced. I got one that's really high over here. Yeah, we have our work cut out for us. We need to tear out and rebuild the wall that I'm holding on to, and we need to tear out and rebuild the wall that I'm sitting on top of. In order for us to do that, we need a platform to stand on. So our goal for today is to get OSB laid down to about right here, all the way over inside of this room. So we're gonna be replacing the floor joists that need to be replaced. We're gonna get the OSB laid down, and we're gonna be tearing out this wall. Honestly, who knew there were so many little parts and pieces into just laying down a floor, but there's a lot. Yeah, you. you saved me. Good job. I saved you, Justin. Hey. Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> HR. <laughs> Your HR. Yeah. First report right there. We gotta go get some lumber. Real quick, we got the two by eights. These are gonna be the floor joists, and then we have this LVL, which is basically a really strong two by ten. Now, I don't know where we're gonna use that, but apparently this is the wood we're going to need. Board perpendicular to the porch and it just raise it up high so it can just pull it like this from the porch. Uh no. Well, I'll come parallel with the house so that way we have to jump down off the porch every time to lift them up and then it. back off to the porch so that's way facing away the porch. Yeah, well, I could probably park in the middle of the yard too. Actually if I parked at the end, then it would take us longer to go down and get yeah, there. Yeah, we can make more money. Exactly. We get paid by the hour. What? Justin! What? Can I start taking this hole off? Sure can. Alright. Find out if it's got how much pressure it's got on it real fast. A lot? No. Of course this is the closer to the wall. So the reason this one wouldn't have much pressure just because we have pretty heavy duty subflooring there and the subflooring itself would serve as a supporting too. So but once we get to the middle of this wall we'll get more and more pressure because it's a much longer span for this flooring to hold. Question Roman, how can we tell just by you cutting that how much pressure is on the board? I think you'll see on this one which closer to the middle when I will be cutting it either uh, sawzall is gonna get stuck or this whole board is gonna be wiggling too much because the blade is pinching so much. Oh, you mean on the reciprocating saw? Reciprocating saw, that's saw exactly saw. right. Sawzall is a name brand oh, saw that... Saw. saw saw? The saw saw? Saw saw. That's what my dad used to say to scare the cats off the porch. Saw saw, saw saw! <laughs> This one was kicking a little bit harder, which means that had a little more pressure. Just like that. Oh, yeah. See? And now, you see, it started to sag a little bit more. It's gonna be funny. I cut this one out and everything starts crumbling down. <laughs> yeah, that'd be so hilarious. <laughs> This bottom plate is not nailed. <laughs> and this one is not nailed. <laughs> have you guys noticed how Justin likes to have his blade wrong way? Like that. So he'll have to grab the sawzall like that. 
trigger was just pinky. So DeWalt, please fix the issue. You designed the reciprocating saw the wrong way. Wow, Justin, that was extremely acrobatic what you just did. What? You just bounced across all those balancing beams carrying that level. Justin has cat-like reflexes. Another day I was tearing this stuff up. I peeled the board down, it takes off, and Justin grabs it in the mid-air. <laughs> and it was 240 pounds. <laughs> I would say it was like 250 pounds. Chicken coop? Chicken coop. Roman's building a chicken coop at his house with all the extra wood here that we're not gonna be using anymore. By the time we get all said and done, he's gonna have like a three-story chicken house. I'll be moving into it. Right now we're fighting with the, our problem of these joists being uneven. It's taller than the other. So we decided to solve this problem by putting in new boards, new lumber replacing it replacing the old lumber with the new we would cut the old joist from here to this beam that's jacking really easy so uh, it's a 20 ton jack too the lumber that we brought here with us is not long enough so we need to go and get it from the shop a couple a couple studs We have our jacks in place. Justin is ready to let the pressure off. And settled right down. We did the way from having two joists that were butting into each other right here, kind of like this, but they were two different dimensions, therefore creating a big step here. We jacked the wall up so that's what's holding this section of the span here put in a new joist that's now is equal or the same the same dimension on each end but we have a little space here that's it's hanging over so i'm gonna go down in the basement and put a screw going from down below into the board so we can close this gap up, match up on the top, which is what we want. And Justin is bringing a sister board that's gonna go on the side of the one that we just put in. Another issue that we're having is the cinder blocks that are put in in the basement. They're higher than the beams that are carrying the joists. Therefore, we have this situation happening because it sits on the cinder blocks. Well, I'm telling you what, we have problem after problem after problem today. Okay, with God's help, we put this board in here. Justin, what our next step is? Finding the bad floor joists and replacing them. I didn't finish tearing out this wall. Gonna do that real quick so we can start inspecting these joists and either assisting them or replacing them completely. The fun part about construction, or at least the fun part to me, the especially fun part about doing a restoration project like this in an older house, it's not just as simple as doing the task. Like laying this OSB down on the floor, extremely simple. But it's like literally the last thing we can do because we have to do a whole bunch of preparation work ahead of time with these walls before we can put this down. So in order for us to go down here, first we need to go up there. Justin laid this big board up on its side. That's what's called a header board. So that is what's taking all of the load of those floor joists above it. So basically it's acting like a big bridge. 
So these boards that come down right now, they're not actually doing anything because all the weight is supported up inside of that header board. And the reason why we had to put that header board up there is because Justin wanted to get a bottle jack in here. And then we have this piece of wood that's pushing up on that header board. It's actually lifting the floor up there right now. So it's taking this wall and it's lifting it off the ground. So that way we can have an open space underneath right here. So that way we can take our OSB and slide it right underneath this wall because right now, over on this part of the wall, we have the old subfloor right here. We want to replace that old subfloor with OSB. So once we lift this part of the wall up, it'll look just like this over here. Slide the OSB under it, set that bottle jack back down, and then we'll be good to go. Then we can leave, leave this wall here for right now. It is going to be coming out at some point, but this is kind of our little temporary workaround without having to rebuild the full set of header board systems from right here all the way over to there. So this is just a lot faster, allows us to get the floor down. And then we can just keep tagging along with the floor, getting the OSB down, and then we're not worrying about stepping over little gaps like this and falling through. Guys, we need your help. Actually, Justin needs your help. You see this poor guy, he, what kind of tools he uses? There is no gears, there is no anything. It's probably like 29 years old. He cannot simply afford to buy one. So we're gonna set the GoFundMe. Hey, he's knocking. <laughs> well, you know, listen, we're gonna set the GoFundMe page for Justin to buy him a chalk line. Actually, hey, what's the top of the model chalk line? I don't know, but I know Milwaukee's are pretty good. Well, they, we could have three of them. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> in case Justin needs three. Okay, we're done talking about you. Why? Well, I heard what you were saying. You're bad mouthing my chalk line. The thing is the best. In what way? I love it. That's, that's the only good thing about it because Justin loves it. Yeah. Nothing else is good about it. <laughs> it's a piece of crap. Roman, do we need to throw some Martinez M1 hammers in there too? Yeah, but those are for me. You want a Martinez? I will take anything. Besides this piece of crap. <laughs> Wait, what's wrong with the old Irwin? This is just a little, like, you leave a, that under the kitchen sink for your honeydews at home. It has That's nail what that set. Is. The claw is pretty straight. Yeah, it's got a magnet on it. Yeah, what's wrong with it, Justin? It's, it's a honeydew one. I have a honeydew tape measure, a honeydew pencil, a honeydew hammer. You remember those tests we did? And Justin is pretty low on empathy, so I don't know why he's <laughs> whining so much. And then also, Justin did a little bit of fabricating underneath of this wall. Before, this wall was sitting right over absolutely nothing. And so Justin took two boards, he sistered them together right here. We're actually going to be moving this wall over to here. Well, not right here, because this wall is going to be gone, going into the kitchen. But when we get down here further, before, it was not over that board whatsoever or over that brick wall. But now we're gonna be shifting the wall like four inches this direction. Here, right here's a better angle. You can see that wall was right over absolutely nothing. It should have been over the top of this concrete wall, but it wasn't. So it was kind of free floating in between non load bearing floor joists. And the only thing holding that up would have been the subfloor. So now instead of sitting on nothing, it's gonna be sitting on top of this sistered up two by 10 that's positioned right on top of the wall. And also right on top of that big beam. Cast iron is a very hard metal. metal. <laughs> Plastic. Cast iron is a very hard. <laughs> metal? Metal? <laughs> therefore, <laughs> cast iron is a very hard, therefore brittle material alloy. It's a iron, that's right, whatever, 90 some percent iron, you know, lots of carbon. So, if you want to get rid of it, you don't waste your time cutting it, you just bust it off with your hammer. Oh, jeez. Fly over and hit me in the. I was hit, hit you in the knee. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say knee. <laughs> Only if your hammer can take it. <laughs> now we got See? It's the. Uh, what's that? Uh, what's that sword from? Uh, Lord of the Rings. Oh, the lightsaber. <laughs> the lightsaber. Boom, boom. Excalibur, you mean? 
No. <laughs> Board one, Roman zero. <laughs> Justin only comes out at night. We've been working with Justin every day for the last seven weeks, and we have determined, like on day number one, that Man Eater by Hauling Oats is his favorite song. He sings it every day, all day. You guys just said it. The wall that used to separate the kitchen, which is where I'm standing right now, to the bathroom, which is where Roman's standing, that was technically speaking a load bearing wall, but as Roman calls it, it was more of a, a mental support Structural. wall. Structural. Structural wall, but not a support wall. And that's because the floor joists go from that outside wall all the way across this room over to that wall. There's not a break right in the middle of them. If there was a break right here, then this would have been a load bearing wall. But since there's not a break, we can take the wall out. That free spans across, we have no problems. Done talking. Why don't you get back to work? Are you gonna pound all the nails? So I don't get caught up in them. Uh, Roman, just imagine if I had a Martinez in one right now, this would be so much easier. Have you checked them out, by the way? Yeah, they're only like $350. Oh, are they? <laughs> and they're speed speakers, they're sweet too. It had a level bubble in it. Yeah, and then they have all the different slots for the measurements, and then you just put your pencil right so inside. It's like and perfect speed square all in one. Yeah. Nobody else makes them like that. I did see that. That was cool. What I'm working on right now is cutting this old sub flooring out because it's A, it's crooked, so we want it straight, and B, it's hanging over from our joys. And we want it flush with the joys because we're gonna add another board here, aka nailer board, where this new sub floor is gonna rest on. And if we don't have that board there, then we can move the plywood like this. That's what we don't want. So now we got the edges all done. We got Roman's mental support wall out. So this is how big the kitchen is going to be. This is all going to be kitchen in here. Now Justin and Roman are doing their inspection on these floor joists to see what ones are low and what needs to be fixed. Justin is that good that he doesn't even need any tools or laser. He can just tell which yeah. ones are low, which ones are high. I'm just an apprentice and trying to learn from the best. Roman, have you ever worked with a guy who's been in concrete for like 45 years? They just walk up to the slab and they're like, there's low, more concrete! Yeah, that's how Justin is. What we got going, that big beam, it goes to that post that runs down into the concrete. So that's supporting the center of the kitchen floor. We have the tile on here. It was so heavy, that big beam sagged. If you can look at it just right, it looks like a smiley face. And so the problem is if we put new boards beside these to make these boards level, then it's going to pull those new boards down into the big dip that these ones have right now, which we don't want. We want them to be flat across. So what Justin proposed we do is we jack up that beam, but Roman's concerned that if we jack that beam up, that beam's already in a permanent U-shape now. It's just gonna lift the whole floor, so the floor is just gonna be higher, but it's still gonna have that U-shape to it. So they're gonna try to take the nails off that's on that big 8x8 beam right there, and then, so they're just gonna be free-floating above that beam, then we're gonna have to replace that beam, but at least we'll be able to put boards beside these floor joists, and then we'll be able to get a flat floor, and then we'll be able to come in and put that beam afterwards. We're not gonna have much weight in here while we're doing this construction work, so it's gonna be just fine. Okay, which ones are going, which ones are staying? You're telling up. Let's move that plywood over here. Let's move this plywood over here. Hey, why don't we move this plywood over here? Good idea. I wish Justin would have told me that. See how much Justin can lift that board up? That's bringing it back up to a level plane. So that's what it being nailed to that big beam underneath. When that big beam sagged, it pulled that board down with it. This little guy is a handy dandy tool from Roman. It is a laser level, so he is attached to that floor joist. And it paints this green laser all the way around the room. So it shows everything on the exact same level. So like you can see that board right there, it's got a big green mark on it. So that board's high, 
So then quite interesting, when we look along that back wall, look how much that drops below. We're sitting just below the subfloor right there. And then as we get to that end, it's high. So according to the laser level from this wall, clear spanning across these floor joists over to that wall, that wall is one inch lower than this wall. This laser level is so cool, look at this. When I put my finger down, you'll see the laser coming out of my finger. And this is where the board is supposed to be. So that is how far this floor joist has sunk over the years. You know, having tools like impacts to be able to drive screws in a matter of a second and laser levels to be able to get the whole plane of a floor in seconds and anywhere you're at, you just lift it up right to the line. You don't have to have a level in there. You don't have to make sure anything is getting off or whatever, because you can check it so quickly with this. It just makes you appreciate the work that they had to do years ago. Like what Justin grew up doing, so that's why he doesn't want tools nowadays. Because he's not used to them. I hate tools. <laughs> so after a little bit of heat debate and heavy discussion, we have came to a conclusion of what we're going to end up doing. Pretty much from right here over, all of these boards are super bowed. And then there's like two of them over here that are really bowed. So really there's only like three boards that are actually straight. So we're figuring why we're at it, doing all the other ones, doing already 85% of the floor end up doing the last three so we are going to be sistering which is taking two boards just like this side by side on every single one of these floor joists for the whole kitchen finally after five years of using one blade justin is replacing this it this is the original to the saw which is 24 years old let's hear it are you, what are you going to complain about now? Huh? It's like... Oh, I set the saw like too deep. I set the saw too deep. Then we just see a whole 4 by 8 sheet of plywood come flying back at you. Okay, grab that and finally do something. Don't tell me what to do, vicious devil woman. Ready? Holy crap. Are you picking it up? Yeah. <laughs> Did you crown it? No. This is the top. Okay. How do you know? Because it's got a crown on it. The crown is the part of the board where it bows to. Oh, so, so like the high part of the bridge. Well, you can say crown up or crown down. No, a crown down would be a U shape. How much do you need? Half an inch. Half an inch. Yeah, inch and a half there, so go. Quarter inch. Now we good. Yes, sir. Being perfectly level in this case, while yes, that would be ideal, it is not absolutely vital. We're gonna have a little bit of variability, but as long as we're on the same plane from one to the other, if one is an eighth of an inch lower than the other one, it's not gonna be the end of the world. It's gonna be within tolerance because we're still gonna be putting stuff on top of these. And so we're gonna have more shifting as time goes on. It's just when we put the final floor on, we need to make sure that's level. But this for now, as long as things are pretty even across, we're good. And while these old boards are bowed down and the new ones are going to be flat, we are gonna get some extra rigidity from these old ones, so it's definitely not hurting anything keeping them there. And then the way they tie into the end, the wall, this is the wall, it'll just sit right on top of these floor joists. So then everything that's being held up up there transfers right through, this helps hold it, and then it also transfers down into the foundation. So Justin's cutting some of the floor joists right now. He simply just took a measurement from the outside wall of the house right here, all the way across to where it touches the wall over there. With my limited experience in construction, I've kind of learned when you're looking at a job site, it looks incredibly complicated because there's a lot going on. But when you break it down by a piece by piece thing, it's actually pretty simple. So at this point, Justin and Roman have nine of them done and there's seven to go. This gives us a little bit better visual. See how we're on the same plane right here? They're straight across. So this is the old board. This is the new board. And you look in the middle and then see on the left side how much higher that new board is. The new board's flat. The old one is bowed down in the middle. And then where it touches the wall at the back, they're basically on the same plane right there. The board behind it, exact same thing. Same plane at the back. You can see the big gap in the middle. And once we get right here, now we're on the same plane. A little bit of an optical illusion there with the slot out, but right here, 
that same plane. We're getting into the living room now and we're inspecting the floor joists. This room's a little bit more tricky. In the kitchen, it was pretty obvious that they were off. These ones, some of them are good, some of them are not. And then it's like, well, if you're doing half of them, do you just do all of them so that way they're done? I'm gonna pull these nails. These in the corners. Yep. We're gonna <clears throat> try and get these all straight with each other. Straight in what way? On top? The well, these ones won't be bad, but it's the ones that are spliced right here. That are ones up, ones down. We'll get them straight with each other and you mean the tops, right? Yes. And then try and get them all the plane as best we can. And then sheet it. Do I need to go get shims? Yes, sir. We got looking at the floor in the living room a little more, and we decided we are also going to sister up two by eights along those. There are a few that are bowed. We talked about future needs of what that room is gonna offer. If it has a dining room table in there and we have 15 people, that's a lot of weight. We just wanna make sure we're not gonna get a bow in the floor. So I am running to the lumber yard right now. I need to pick up some shims. We are not going to be able to continue working in the dining room today because they have to get more wood on order. It was supposed to be here today, but I guess the shipment did not come in. We got a little bit of snow last night, so that might have threw their order off. But we need the shims in order to continue what we're doing in the kitchen and such. So it's not wasted effort. We are just having a, a little bit of change of plans from what we originally planned to do. Uh, see if we can fit in here. Welcome to the lumber yard. Oh, we secured the goods. I guess Roman wanted composite shims. So for $9.99 a box, there you go, Roman. Just finished pulling the nails out of the middle. Here you go, Roman. $9.99 a box, just for you. Only $9.99? Wow, that's... $999 a box. Oh, I was thinking $9.99, I was gonna say, that's more than I make an hour. So we got new boards coming to put beside this just like we do in the kitchen. But those aren't gonna be here till after the weekend so we are not gonna be getting to those today. Well, unfortunately it's too bright for the laser to see. I just wanted to kind of shoot and see how within the plane our new boards are. Because what we will have to do is, I would say equalize the old with the new, line them up, top and tops because bottom we'll worry about later because we're gonna start putting the sheeting down and we need the tops to be the same plane. So Roman's got a screw in the top of the old floor joist and he's got the new one beside it. So he's taking his hammer and he's pulling up on this old floor joist and then we're taking those composite shims and we're shimming it underneath so then both of these boards should be about the same level, is that right? Yes, but our goal here is like I said before, to make two tops flush with each other, but our old board is pre-stressed, it's bent backwards, so it's cup like that, while our new board is straight. We don't want to put the stress of the old board on the new and make the old board bend again, so we need to shim the old board up, make it straight, and then screw them together while still not taking the shims out so the old board would not start pulling it down again. So that's our objective. We're gonna achieve it with putting the shims under. <sighs> okay, let's get them two boards that Cole just brought out there. Oh, that okay. I brought out there? The, the ones that you said to take out? Yeah, we'll get them back in here, we'll put them up, we'll get a string line up, we'll get the new board shimmed to the string, and then we'll bring the other boards to the new board. This end's got to go in first. Who's? Oh, nice. Hopefully. Ah. 
So you got that block of wood right there, and there's a little string that's connected all the way across right in front of Roman. It's connected to that side. So underneath that wall is an actual concrete wall, so we cannot move the height of that. This is a concrete foundation wall, so we cannot move the height of that. So we are going to shim up every single one of these to that height. So th this block of wood has to be barely touching, almost not touching this string line. So that's where we want to be our new boards be lifted up. That's all we need is one because we might have to take it back out. We're gonna have to take it back out. Yeah. When we put the beam in. Yeah. So How are you gonna take it back out? 90 degree, a 90 degree drill. Oh, now he's making it even more difficult and longer to do. He is thinking good. So before we fix them, see how we have the old one settled way down, then we're gonna bring the old one up to this height. It'll look just like that one right there. There, you got it done. The same with all the ones behind it. Already leveled out. Good job, Roman. Thank you. Well, Justin and Roman are in here doing kind of a two-guy job. I'm gonna just be running around the basement. Wouldn't be on a call if they need anything from me. But in the interrogation room, we have all this old furniture, and we have all this stuff on the shelves. We need to get this out of here so that way when we start working down here, we have a more of an open space. And we just like to get everything empty down here in the basement. We also need to come in with the leaf blower at some point and when we have all this stuff out of here, then we're not doing a double cleanup. So I'm gonna be working on this. What's the next step now? You get a line figured out where we're starting our sheeting and we can put some a couple pieces of sheeting on there. And then, I don't know. So we're cleaning out the basement? What? Finish cleaning out the yeah. basement? Yeah. I like a clean job site. I have a challenge, Roman. How hard can you squeeze that with both hands? See what you got. Oh, it's going to warm up. Stretch its fingers out. Holy crap! What about 260? 270? Holy cow! <laughs> Alright, Justin, let's see what you got. Oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nothing uh, this. Oh, mm, mm. <laughs> now he he dropped the scale, so the scale the arrow would go. Yeah, it's not calibrated anymore. Okay, this is about two fifty, two forty nine. I'll I'll go to three hundred. It only even go to three hundred, does it? Yeah, it will. You keep. Yeah, it goes all the way back to zero. So if it goes to zero, three hundred. Uh, 270. Ah. What a weird. Ah! 275. I guess that's it. Ready? Yep. 235, I think. That's it? <laughs> Unfortunately. Darn. Justin doesn't really like working on Fridays, so he's a little bit moody today. Forgive. Forgive him, forgive him, please. So we're debating 
deciding which way we want to go to put this subfloor down, we can either use the drill or we can use the nail gun. So we're just gonna run a little test. Roman's got the nail gun, Justin's got the drill. Ready? Yep, go. We're using the screws. So this thing, people, will make you broke because the longer you take, the more you make. Yeah, and that's too fast. That's too fast. was to get about 18 inches from this wall with the OSB, which we did. We ran into more problems in the other room than we expected with the floor joists and such, so we did not quite get enough done to get the rest of the kitchen OSB'd, but we made a heck of a dent today. So let's take a little time to imagine how this is gonna look. I just came to the house, I came up the stairs to the landing, now we walk into the kitchen. We're gonna have countertops and cabinets all the way down this side, and then it'll go to the back wall, Cabinets and countertops going this whole way. I'm thinking a sink right in front of the kitchen. I would like to have an island here in the middle as well. Personally, I like the look of an L island, but Nava's gonna be working in the kitchen way more than me, so we're probably gonna go with what she likes. I also really like the look of having two kitchen sinks, so I would not mind having a secondary kitchen sink on the island, so that way if we have a cooking station over here, the cook has access to their own sink, and then the other sink that would be in front of the window, if someone needs to get a glass of water or wash their hands or something, they're not interfering with the cook. We're gonna have this whole backside with countertops and cabinets as well, and we are going to be taking this door out, so this is not gonna be here anymore, but this whole space right here it's gonna be one massive kitchen. Justin and Roman calculated up the strength of our new floor. They said it is strong enough to hold 32,000 pounds. So I don't really plan on having 100 people in my house, so we should be good in the floor department now. We got a lot done today, and I am, I'm excited in how this is turning out. This is awesome. Cole, I hate to ask, but since we've got done so much now, can I get my hoodie? Oh, that brings up a great point, Roman. If you go to cornstar.farm or go to the link in the description, you can pick up your own hoodie. Well, that being said, this is all we got for today. We're tired. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.